and welcome to my channel. I am Crystal and this is Homemaking on the Homestead. And today I am just going to kind of, I've got some things to share with you that I think will be very helpful. I've got some frugal kitchen tips. I also have a couple other things I'm going to share with you as I kind of go about my day. Right now I'm in my living room doing the intro of this video because my husband is up on the roof uh, pressure washing the roof and getting the moss off the roof. So when you live in a very rainy climate, moss is just a reality of life. And so every couple of years, he goes up there and scrapes off all the moss. It makes the roof last longer, and he's in process of doing that, which makes noise in the kitchen. It's not really bad, and I am going to go into the kitchen, um, but I just wanted you guys to know if you hear anything in the background, that's what you're hearing because he's got to get his stuff done and I got to get my stuff done. So, hey, it's just the way it goes. I hope you all had an amazing Easter. As I'm filming this, Easter is actually tomorrow. Uh, so that's uh, one of the things I'm going to be doing in my kitchen today. I've got a little um, pie to make that was actually an inspiration by one of you ladies. So I'll talk about that in a minute. And I, like I said, I've got some frugal tips and I'm so excited to share this with you. So right now, I'm going to move into the kitchen and we're going to take it from there. So one thing I need to do is I have a half a dozen canning jars there that need to go down with all my other canning jars. They are from food that I have used uh, recently. Um, I also have sitting over here some lemon juice, lemon flavoring eggs, butter, they're sitting out to kind of like room temperature so that I can uh, make a pie with that. Um, because this is the day before Easter, we're not having any big Easter plans. I asked my husband what he wanted to do for Easter and he said, a barbecue. So I'm like, okay, I can vary from tradition, tradition right? And uh, so I was thinking, okay, I'm going to make tomorrow, I'll make the potato salad, or maybe I'll do that later today, who knows. And I wanted to make a pie, though, for our dessert, something very spring-like. I was reading the comments on last Friday's video, and one of you ladies talked about a lemon sponge pie that she had made using the pat and pan pie crust that I had shared. And then she said it was actually an Amish recipe, and I thought, really? Okay, I've never heard of it. But I went over and grabbed my new trusty Amish cookbook, uh, Cooking from Quilt Country, and sure enough, in this is a lemon sponge pie. So that's what I am going to do today, and I'm really excited about that. Also, I got an email from one of you ladies, Adrian, that shared with me a link on YouTube of Marsha Adams, the author of Quick, uh, Cooking from Quilt Country who had a show on PBS in the late 1980s, early 1990s, I believe, and they have all the shows on YouTube. I'm gonna leave a link because I've watched, so far I've watched one, and I'm wanting to watch some more of them. It was so fun to watch her cooking the meals, so it actually kind of inspired me, so I'm kind of excited about that. Anyway, okay. Um, let's see. A couple things came up that I needed to do uh, and something that I bought and I thought, ooh, I'm going to talk about some frugal kitchen tips because we all could use a way to save a little bit of money nowadays, right? These things I know that I have shared in the past, but I have some more specific information and I'm going to actually do it so you can watch me do it. One of the ways that I save money is I make my own, uh, actually I made these probably 20 years or more ago, cloth napkins just super simple surgered around the edges of them and i i use these instead of paper napkins to save money they wash up great mine have lasted it seems like forever and i do use paper napkins but usually it's to do things like clean grease out of a pan or whatnot um, and i also have these white towels that I have had for probably 20 years, and I use these instead of paper towels. It's been on my mind for a while as I started out 20 years ago with a huge stack of them, and over time, that's a lot of time, a lot of washing, uh, some have just gotten beyond repair. They end up in my husband's shop and he uses them for car maintenance and whatever else. Uh, and I've used them for cleaning rags, but Right now, as you can see, I have so many of them that are just in terrible shape and they're ready to go to the rag bin. 
uh, but I just hadn't got around to buying more. I looked on Amazon and saw a few and I thought, well, I could, but I decided to wait. I was in Costco the other day and I found them. These are the towels that I bought. It could have been a different brand 20 years ago. Who knows? Uh, and these are what I have used for the last 20 years. These are towels that are used typically for automotive. If you look at the little uh, pictures down here, they also show up for washing dishes, for wiping off counters, cleaning up things around stoves, uh, whatever. That's their little emblems down there. Uh, but I have absolutely loved these. These towels are 100% cotton. They can be washed over and over and over and obviously last for years. Now, that was my experience at least with the set that I bought 20 years ago. Quality of things has changed obviously over the years. So, I mean, I cannot guarantee that if you go into the automotive section, buy these things, whether it's Costco or anywhere else locally, that yours are gonna last 20 years. I don't even know if mine will. But I think it's it's a great deal. Here's how these work out. I paid $21.99 for them for 52 towels, and which comes out to about 42, 43 cents a piece. I think that is a bargain. For 40 cents a towel, it'll you can wash them over and over and save lots of money on paper towels. Very convenient. They can be thrown in with your other kitchen towels, uh, washcloths and that type of thing in your laundry. I think it's a great, awesome deal. So I just wanted to share that if any of you would like to do that. I am also going to wash these today and I will probably update the video a little bit later to show you what they look like size-wise before they're washed, after they're washed, so you kind of know all about it and what to expect. While I'm in the kitchen, it made me remember about my palm tree. I wanted to share a little bit about with that with you. I think it was last week's video. I ended up um, getting some of the little spikes that you put in the ground fertilizer and went on Google to see, can my palm tree be saved? I still don't know if it can, but I'm going to give it my best shot. So I had to start out by cutting off all the fronds on the outside. Everything was dead because that's not going to come back to life. And uh, just to put the encouragement into the center of the tree, which is where the new fronds come up and then branch out. So I'll keep you updated on the uh, palm tree saga. Can I save it? Now it's time for my next frugal tip to save you some money in the kitchen. And I'm sure you're going to look at this and think, oh, Dawn dish soap. However, it's Costco's ver version of Dawn. Uh, this is, I think, the second bottle I bought. I figured I'd give it a try. Uh, it comes out to probably like half the cost of what Dawn is in, for the big bottle. This may be just the first bottle because this stuff lasts me forever and I'm going to show you one reason that it can last so long. But um, yeah, if you have a Costco and they sell this, I highly recommend it. I cannot tell the difference between this and Dawn. So that is one frugal tip. And I use it for, obviously, for hand washing dishes. But what I do to stretch this out is I put in uh, a little bit of Dawn not a whole lot. This is a pint size, let me try to get it in the camera here. This is a pint size canning jar. I bought the lid and the pumper um, from Amazon. And I just put a little bit in here and I fill the rest with water. And as it goes down, like you can see this one has gone down, I will actually add more water to it. This washes a ton of dishes and it does a great job. I don't find I'm using more of it just because I have watered it down. And now I'm going to show you what I do for my all-purpose cleaner. Uh, in the past, I have made tons of all-purpose cleaner, different recipes, tried all kinds of things, and ended up finding this, and I love it. It works amazing, and it cleans. I use it for everything. Kitchen countertops, stove, table, bathroom counters and surfaces. It is just an amazing, uh, cheap, very frugal, all-purpose cleaner. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So when I have used up some of my Dawn dish soap like I have here, it's really simple. I take off the lid and I carefully add a little bit more water. I say carefully because you don't want to end up with a whole lot of suds in here. And that's all there is to it. I put this back on and I am good to go for quite a while longer. To make this all-purpose cleaner, you're going to need an empty spray bottle and your Dawn or your Kirkland 
dish soap. And in here, I literally add just a few drops. I don't add much at all. I don't even know if you can see, it's kind of, not sure about the light, but it's kind of stuck to the side. That's it. That's all I put in here. And by the way, this is, I believe, a 16 ounce. Yes, it is a 16 ounce spray bottle. Now comes the easy part. I once again carefully fill it with water. You could also add a splash of vinegar for some extra cleaning towel, and that would keep any suds at bay. Sometimes I do that. This time I'm not going to. I'm just filling it up with water. And now that I have it almost full, I put the lid on and I gently do this kind of a number. I just cleaned off my kitchen counters a little bit ago and was getting ready to make this so that I could wipe down my counters. So I'm going to show you how well it works. And there we go. I have a nicely clean and disinfected counter. I'm pretty sure I forgot to mention that these towels are 14 inches by 17 inches in size. I am going to wash them now and then we're going to see how these turn out. Now that the towels are going, it is time for me to start working on my pie. Whoever created this was just pure genius. No rolling, no nothing. I shared about it before. I just love it so much, but that's it. It didn't take me any time at all, and I have a pie crust ready to go. Now let's make the pie. The recipe calls for the juice of one lemon and the zest from that lemon, and I didn't have a lemon, so we are substituting lemon juice, and according to the back of the lemon juice, it is three tablespoons of lemon juice from the bottle that equals about one lemon. I am also using probably about an eighth a teaspoon of lemon flavoring, or you could use lemon extract to substitute for the zest. I am in editing mode today, and I realized yesterday I didn't even tell you guys anything about this pie. It is absolutely delicious. It forms like a lemony custard on the bottom, and the top is kind of soft, spongy, sweet. It's not too sweet. It's actually kind of light and nice. Um, I thought it was great. My husband had seconds, so I knew it had to be good if he was going to have seconds. So anyway, that's the update on this amazing lemon sponge pie. My pie is out of the oven. My towels are in the dryer, and it is now time to change the sheets. And because the weather is warming up, it is also time to fold and put away my down comforter that we have been using all winter because it is just getting too warm at night. So let's get this done. I thought you might find this interesting. I set one aside and did not wash it because I wanted to be able to compare it. And here they are after they have been washed. And you can see one of my very old, very stained ones right next to it. And they held up great though. I feel like I'm making good progress on my day. If you hear background noise, that's husband outside mowing. So he's gone from the roof to the grass now. Um, but dinner tonight is going to be a leftover corned beef because yesterday I finally got to making my corned beef St. Patrick's Day dinner. And now today I'm taking the leftovers and we're going to make corned beef Reuben sandwich. I had already bought some rye bread and put it in the freezer so I pulled out enough to make sandwiches. I'll probably have one, my husband will have two. For cheese I have some Havarti cheese uh, that melts really nice, tastes really good. I think typically you're supposed to use Swiss cheese but that's just not going to happen because that's what I have. Uh, I also have sauerkraut because we like to put sauerkraut on our Reuben sandwiches. And I am going to make up a little bit of, uh, you know, just kind of a quick kind of Thousand Island dressing type taste spread. 
for these sandwiches? I don't have a recipe. It is just, for me, a combination of mayonnaise, pickle juice, and some ketchup. And I just mix it up to taste whenever it tastes right, which would be very similar to Thousand Island dressing, then I know I've got it. Well, my day is about over. My husband's day is over. He just came in a little bit ago, and I'm going to make some sandwiches here. We've got potato chips to go with that, and a salad I have in the refrigerator. I am going to take my apron off and relax for the rest of the evening. We're probably going to just sit out on our deck and enjoy this beautiful, sunny, warm evening. I really thank you guys for coming along with me today. I hope you found some of my frugal kitchen tips to be helpful for you. Leave me a comment below if you've got something to share or any other frugal tips that you could add. We'd love to share all of those great things. I hope you guys all have an amazing week ahead and I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.